So the last thing we looked at was creating various different clips which could house a scale and then another seven clips which could house all of the chords that belong to that scale and then saving them in their own self-contained folder at a location to which you can return later. Um, so here I've got my scales and chords folder down here. Um, at the minute I've only got one folder inside which is E major because that's the only one we've worked with. I've got a chords folder which houses an ALS file which is an Ableton Live set. I only had one track in the set which was called Grand Piano because that was the name of the device that I was using. But on that track I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clips each of which housed one of the chords which belongs to the E major scale. And then I've also got the E major scale clip as well. So I'm going to bring in to this new session, I'm going to bring in this grand piano track. Okay, now notice when you bring in the track, it brings in the instrument on the track as well. Okay, and all of the clips which were on that track, all of the clips which are saved with the track, I'm trying to get rid of these tracks that I don't need. So here I've got all of the chords of E major and I want my E major scale as well so I'm going to bring that in. Actually I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I oh, know I don't need to because it's also brought in the grand piano instrument as well. So I've got my E major scale and then all of my E major chords. Now a good way to get up and running with a composition using this technique is to use something called follow actions. So follow actions enable you to give a specific instruction to an Ableton Live clip which pertains to how it behaves once it's finished playing. So I'm going to double click on this E major clip. I'll just zoom in here and open up this launch box by pressing this little L button. And there's a bunch of stuff on the screen, but what I want you to concentrate on is this here. So this says follow action, and then you've got three rows pertaining to how you tell these follow actions to behave. It's got two sides to it, and we'll look at why that is, but it's, it's more simple than you might think. The first bit of information you give a clip using this follow action command is play for a certain length. Okay, so when you are triggered, I want you to play for this amount of musical time, X amount of musical time. And the way that you, you tell it how much musical time to play for is with these three boxes. Whenever you see three numbers in a row pertaining to musical time in Ableton Live, remember bars, beats, 16th notes. Yeah. So if you want this clip to play for one bar, it will play for one bar by default. That's fine. Or you can click and drag and change this to six bars, six and a half bars, six and a half bars, and two sixteenth notes, etc., etc. I'm going to keep things simple here, and I just want it to play for one bar. Okay. The next bit of information you give it is after you've played for a specific amount of time, do something. Okay. And the do something always pertains to what happens next after you play. Okay, and you can choose nothing. I want you to stop. I want you to play again, which usually happens by default with live. I want you to play the previous clip in the track. Okay, so the track immediately above. I want you to play, sorry, the clip immediately above. I want you to play the next clip, so the clip immediately below. The first clip in the track, so the topmost clip. The last, so the, the lowest clip. Any clip at all, including yourself, or any other clip, not including yourself. Okay, so play for a specific amount of time and then launch another clip, depending on what you decide to choose in this list. I'm going to choose other. So the command so far is play for one bar, and once you've finished playing for one bar, launch an other clip on the same track. Make sense so far? Yeah? Okay, the final row we've got here is simply so we can choose an alternative option on this side, it's the, exactly the same list, but you can choose two different options. So I might choose, say, for example, next, and then you can weight these choices against each other. So that's, if I make this a two and this a one, okay, for every one time that a clip selects the next clip in the track to play, twice as many times it will select a random other clip. All right, so, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to turn that off, no action, I'm going to make that a zero, make this a one. So we're just dealing with play for one bar and then play an other clip every single time it happens. So I was just working with that E major clip. So what I want to do is select the E major clip, hold shift, 
and select the bottommost clip on the track. Having done that, I want to redo this follow action, play for one bar, play another clip. So I've now commanded all of the clips on the track to behave that way. So watch what happens. Alright, so we're generating a chord progression. We know that all of those chords belong to E major because we've already program programmed them in correctly. So we're generating a chord progression, we're asking the software to do it for us. Um, and if I just stop that there, we could record that into arrangement view if we wanted to. So here's arrangement view. These chords are being generated randomly by the follow actions and being recorded into arrangement view. so on and so forth.